Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Let's Make a Statement podcast. Well, it looks like in recent development, the U.S., of course, this is late news. The U.S. has begun its strikes on various strategic targets in Syria and Iraq, as well as other selected locations. This, obviously, is the result of the tragic deaths of three servicemen. Uh, and, well, let's see if we can rephrase that here. This total of three service personnel was two gentlemen and one woman. Absolutely tragic. Question here, though, is are we dragging the U.S. into another 20-year war in the Middle East? Now, that certainly has to be a question that is at the top of everyone's mind. Do not, and I mean please, do not get me wrong by any means, any time, and I mean any time, a U.S. service member is killed by these absolute pigs. They deserve to be dealt with in the most severe blow that we can offer to show that we mean business. Now, that being said, I don't support us getting into another 20-year war in the Middle East. If we're going to do this, let's do it, get in, and stop all this tit for tat. Meanwhile, Iran's president has indicated that he intends to continue his assault on U.S. personnel operations in the Middle East. So what will be the immediate ramifications of this here at home? Well, it should be fairly simple to see. I should drive up to a gas pump and take a look. I know, even before I begin writing the outline for this particular episode where I live here in Arkansas, the price has jumped nearly 20 cents at the pump. And I'm sure it's going to continue to go up even further as we find ourselves being sucked into this major conflict in the Middle East. Now, while this is going on, you can, you can just, without reservation or even hesitation, other leaders are leaking their lips. Needless to say, once again, while we find ourselves having to deliver munitions and various targets in the Middle East, Kim over in North Korea, continues to do various missile testing yet again and continuing to attempt to flex his muscles and actively calling for war. Are we, he, let me ask you this, are we standing at straight up midnight on the nuclear clock? I promise you there are some that would say that we are literally, and I do mean literally, seconds away from hitting that straight up mark on the clock. Meanwhile, here in the homeland, it's been determined that a personal, supposedly, connection to terrorism who crossed the border nearly a year ago was recently arrested by ICE after they become aware of the situation. And there's been recordings floating around across the internet about this individual, about them saying, don't worry, you'll know my name. When the time is right, you won't forget my name. You won't forget who I am. My question is, how many more of these people are running around on the streets of America that are tied or affiliated with these terrorist organizations and have not been found? But I'm truly starting to think that some of the weird fires at various food plants and poultry operations that we've heard about over the past year actually might be connected to some of these individuals. I don't know, but it's certainly something to think about. And it's always why, always, 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 you're going to hear me tell you to keep your head on a swivel and maintain that situational awareness at all times when you're out in public, and specifically when you're at locations where there are large gatherings taking place, whether that be a concert, or if you've got the money to buy the tickets or have already bought tickets to go to the Super Bowl. I'm telling you people, that's like a, a prime target for something ugly to happen. Really, really, this year at no other point in time has me concerned. But are we really prepared for what's next? I think with the passing of each and every day, I have to really wonder if people here at home in America are really prepared for what may be coming around the corner. I mean, let's, let's look at this. Let's, let's digest this for a minute. With so many areas of conflict going on around the globe, I'm afraid that we are closer at any other point in time to being on the cusp of World War III. Now, I'm not trying to be the doomsayer here, but let's be real. 
We are living in some horrific times and things are literally, and I do mean literally, teetering on the brink of an all-out head-to-head confrontation with so many different countries. So if any of you know what a tinderbox is, you know, it's a little box, a tinderbox where it's primed for fire. I can assure you that we're living inside of one. All it's going to do is take one little spark to set everything in place. And what really kills me, everything's in place, everything's taking place, that would suggest that we're actively in or the beginning stages of World War III, yet none of the mainstream media outlets here in America are calling it that, but yet many media outlets across the globe are calling it exactly that and warning their people to be prepared for things to get ugly. That being said, I have to wonder if Russia is going to continue their support of Iran and find a way to strengthen their partnership or if they're going to step back for fear of being drawn into a conflict they cannot effectively manage while they continue their operations in Ukraine. Now, that being said, while we're on Russia here, I noticed just seeing a couple of news clips here today prior to getting this out, that Tucker Carlson was seen over in Russia, and many are wondering whether or not he will do a sit-down interview with Vladimir Putin, and some are even crying that that would be considered treasonous. I don't. I'm going to tell you why, because it's true investigative journalism, and if Tucker gets that sit down with Putin, maybe he can find things out that we couldn't find out through different channels, and maybe get, just maybe, get Putin to expose what's it going to take to end that current conflict between Russia and Ukraine, because let's face it, we all can have our own opinions about how horrific that campaign over there between Russia and Ukraine is, right? But do any of us really know the real reasons of why Russia invaded Ukraine? I mean, let's face it, Ukraine doesn't have the purest track record across the world, okay? A lot of corruption in their government. So really, we don't know what was that final push for Putin to make his move and evade Ukraine. Okay, move it on, though. And hopefully Tucker gets that sit down. And maybe he can begin to open up some doors of revelation of things that will make a little bit more sense. Now, let's add to this tinderbox of things, and to make matters even worse, folks, I'm telling you, we are on the brink of a civil conflict in Texas and other border states, and I think what scares me the most is, could this be the opportunity for someone to create a, a Fantastic Freddy? And if you don't want a Fantastic Freddy, is that basically a red flag type of event? That could cause us to be placed in some form of a government lockdown. Come on, let's keep in mind who sits in the administration and some of the goals in the back of their mind and what motivates them to do what they do. But one has to truly wonder. And just to be perfectly clear, I 100% fully support the efforts of Governor Greg Abbott of Texas, as well as all the other governors who are supporting him in his stance to protect his borders and the great people of Texas by providing him with National Guard troops if so needed or whatever it is he needs to make a stand and protect his people, his borders, his state, and that's his constitutional duty to do so. Now, with everything going on down in Texas and around the rest of the world, one has to ask this question. Will we actually even half an election this year. Now, I can promise you, now, here in a broad, that's really a hot topic. And, and again, it's whether or not we're actually going to have an election. One thing that scares me is that in the event that we find ourselves in a major conflict, okay, so a global war that people actually acknowledge and admit to, if they will suspend the elections, I certainly cannot say that I feel confident that our current administration has the capability of leading this country in a major wartime event. And even if we do, even if we do make it to the November election, is the left going to try to pull a major switcheroo as we get closer to the event? 
I certainly can see them trying to get someone else in place to replace our current president as the nominee. Now, come on, you got to be real. And don't get me wrong, this is nothing to do with my disdain of our current administration, okay? But the president certainly is not in the best of health. I don't care what the left mainstream media want to say. There are times I can perfectly tell that man has no clue which way is up or where he's at. And with that being said, I think that most Americans have reached their point of total and complete frustration with the levels of BS that has taken place. And I can see President Trump, okay, now this again, we get to the elections. I can see President Trump having a complete blowout in the elections. The polls are already suggesting that. I don't care what the, the left mainstream media is dishing out. All you got to do is go to any of his events and watch true pollsters and what's going on in the blowouts he's having at various state-level caucuses thus far. That tells the real truth, okay? It's utterly amazing how quickly that all of their futile attempts to have him removed from the election are quickly starting to fall apart. Now, I'm not going to get too excited here because I know they got ways of being shysty and whatever, but the case against them for January 6th has been removed from the docket from the D.C. court. Is there something they know that they are not communicating with us? Or, or now here's the flip, or are they beginning to wake up and realize that they may find themselves in precarious situations after President Trump earns another term to serve this country. And now that loom ball down there in Georgia, Fannie Willis, who's attempting to charge Mr. Trump in Georgia, she's now been subpoenaed by Congress for questioning about some of her misguided dealings. So let me ask you here, what does the evil cabal have up their sleeves right now? Having listened and watched several items across the internet about how President Trump's January 6th hearing has been removed from the D.C. docket. Fannie Willis now being pulled into Congress for questioning about her misguided dealings. And all the issues currently going on down there on the southern border with Governor Greg Abbott and all that. Something has to be going on in the back office of those who want or attempt to destroy this great country. Who was it that said, never let a good crisis go to waste? Hang on here, let me think, let me think, let me think. Oh, there we go. Well, it was from Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals, page 98. You can check that out for yourself. Folks, the cabal is being too quiet in the background, and I feel like they're going to attempt to use the peaceful protest at our southern border as a way of implementing and using the NSA camera surveillance software, which even... People within the organization have said they do not want to do because it's illegal, but yet can be activated by the president if he feels the situation calls for it. Now, earlier on, I had done one where they had talked about uh, some 700,000 vehicles that were supposed to amass on the southern border. I don't think they've seen numbers anywhere close. Now, granted, there are convoys down there, several truck, you know, commercial trucks, 18 wheelers. A lot of personal vehicles and whatnot, but I don't think they've hit the numbers they thought was going to be down there. But nonetheless, they are there. They are there showing their support. It appears, and again, it appears to be a mix of, of both truckers and personal vehicles, which are meeting up in local ranch, so not to create an obstruction of operations that they are, uh, that are currently, currently taking place. I'm firmly convinced that everything taking place at the border has been a planned event that's been masterminded all the time from those currently in power from day one. Now, I've heard as many as 8 million have come across the border illegally. Do you realize 8 million people is the population of many of our states? So here's, let me give you this little nugget to think about. We have so many of our active military, pardon me, military personnel serving overseas and various conflicts and upcoming conflicts. Who exactly 
do we have left here in the homeland that's going to be able to protect us from what could turn into a complete and utter nightmare? Food for thought right there, just saying. God, you got to think about it. Have you ever noticed that every time our government is up to no good here at home that we usually find ourselves entering into another crisis overseas? Got to think about that. What's happening over in the Middle East, right? It's kind of like a distraction. I can, without hesitation, almost guarantee you that we are only starting to see and witness what will grow into an even bigger conflict in the Middle East and that, once again, will force us to be drug into another needless, elongated war. Now, I'm not saying we absolutely shouldn't seek absolute retribution for the loss of those military personnel. But does it have to take 20 years to get the job done? Just like that of what they tried to make us believe during the second Gulf War in Afghanistan and other locations. And I can assure you, with great confidence, you talk to many military personnel that served in those conflicts, and they're going to tell you they still honestly don't know why we were there. Let's continue on here. So here's another question, food for thought. Please explain to me why we are continuing to send all this money and military gear to Ukraine when they know that there is such an absolute amount of corruption in that government. Now, for some, you know, some who want to tell me that and so they can attempt to beat Russia during this invasion, then explain to me why we are not sending our absolute best gear that we know would get this job done. Why do we continue to send older equipment that may not be as effective as what Russia has been given time to develop over the years? Look, I'm not pro-Russia by any means. And but 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 I want you to I want you to think about this as in many other conflicts, okay? And this applies to any place across the world. Exclude the military conflicts, but there are a lot of amazing people over there in that country who do not want to be subjected to this nonsense and many more, many more than what we do. I am, however, I am, again, firmly against communism as well as any other form of dictatorial, dictatorial government. I'm just in a complete mixed bag of confusion here. We basically are preparing or setting the groundwork for an expanding situation in the Middle East. At the same time, China's Xi is just sitting back and waiting for that precise moment he decides to pounce on Taiwan. And, and here's another point of confusion that throws me off a bit. The U.S. government over and over has stated that it supports China's one-nation policy. Let that sit in. Yet our government keeps uttering how we will stand with Taiwan using military power if China attempts to invade them. Please, 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 tell me how will that work out here in the U.S.? I don't see it going very well. And even worse, again, getting back over there in the Middle East, Iran's president has firmly indicated their desire to continue to hit U.S. targets continue their escalation of what's going on over there. Where is the leadership here? Who can see through the veils of what in the hell is going on? We need a president who, again, wants to bring our military might back to what it used to be, going back as far as President Reagan. Man, look, if you, you need to wake up out there if you haven't realized this. China has expanded their spending on their military to levels never seen before. Yet all the while, we continue to cut our budget back here. And I'm not even going to dive into the morale of our military personnel because it has to be at its all-time lowest. This Mickey Mouse show, what they've going on right now in our military, having to spend millions on DEI training. Please, what the shit is that? Let's take those millions they're spending on this DEI training and in, invest it in 
more modern equipment that can show and stand toe-to-toe with what China's trying to produce. How about that? Look, let's be perfectly clear here. When you sign up to serve in the military, at the end of the day, your only job, your only job, is to protect and defend and kill when necessary. This whole thing with this DEI and culture sensitivity doesn't have any room in a military that we need to defend our country. And you got to just know that our adversaries have to absolutely be sitting back and laughing at us. Oh, look, it's not to say they don't have the same problems in their military like we do with all this nonsense. But I can assure you this, if this people would come out with this in other countries, militaries, uh, I, th- I, th- I think their leaders would find a way to unlie them. Now, I'm not suggesting we unlie our people, but here's what I am suggesting, is we don't even let them in. Okay? We got no room in our military for this nonsense right now. We, we need a strong, ooh, blah, blood and guts, get in there and defend this country military, right? Come come on now. I know some of you out there. Give me an amen. Look, here's the thing, and, and I don't care. You, you can be queer or trans all you want, but you need to leave that shit back at your house and don't be bringing it with you to the front lines. And, well, I'm a bit on, bent on this topic. Let me be perfectly clear on this topic for some of you who might be just a little confused about it. There are only two chromosomes that exist in a human DNA that distinguish your sexual identity. One is the X, the other one is a Y. There isn't any pink, purple, bunny, kitty cat, or any other nonsense chromosome that has been identified, found in that chain, to sport all this nonsense. I can assure you this, though. I bet if this country truly finds itself knee-deep in another world war, which I really believe we are already in, that when the shit truly hits the fan. Those who are a little iffy on which side of the aisle they claim to be will be looking for a true man to help protect them when the SHTF event takes place. Mark my word. They won't be going looking for the friend who thinks he's a pink bunny rabbit. Jeez, I've got to calm down here a bit. This stuff gets my blood absolutely boiling. I can't even begin to tell you how much I'd love to crawl through my screen when I watch some of these absolute moronic videos. From various sides of life, you know which ones I'm talking about. Get on TikTok, take a look. Because I'm sitting here just wondering how many times their parents must have dropped them on their heads. Oh, and please, please, please don't come at me with this, but they were bored like that. Line of garbage. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. You were either born a little boy or a little girl. That has already been proven genetically and scientifically. You can take the rest of that nonsense and stick it right back in your ass where he pulled it out of. I watched a a, a reel the other day where a a mother and her 11-year-old daughter were at the doctor's office and the doctor telling the little girl that now was the right time. Now, now was the right time for her to start her puberty blockers. And sadly, the mother sitting there supporting every bit of disgusting filth coming from this doctor's mouth. Well, these people are sick, people, I'm telling you. I'm just going to say right now, I personally feel that both the mother and the doctor should be unjailed for mutilation of gender altering a young person who really doesn't have a clue about anything in life yet. Listen, if you want to change your sexual identity when you become an adult over the age of eight, 18, that's between you and who ever. However, this continual bombardment of this nonsense on our young people in schools, across social media platforms, must be brought to a dead, screeching halt. Let me ask any of you, here, let me ask you, did any of you at the tender age of 11 know what you wanted to be in life? Where you would live? How many kids you would have? What would be your ideal dream job? And how, if any, major change in your identity would significantly change your life? Think about that question now. now because here's the thing. Hell, at the age of 11, I was doing good to make sure I was wearing matching clothes and socks and to ensure my hair was properly done before heading out to school. This has to end, and it has to end now. And those that continue to peddle 
this nonsense should be in jail. Phew, Lord, how'd I even get off on that tangent? Well, okay, folks, it's time for me to pack things up and prepare to get this episode out to you for your ears. But until next time, don't, please don't forget to tell your family you love them. Because really, tomorrow you don't know what's going to happen. You don't even know if this may be the last time you have to say that to them. But by all means, make sure to keep your head on a swivel. And as always, maintain your situational awareness when out in public. And again, especially when you're at large events. Till the next time, right here on the Make a Statement podcast, be blessed. Peace out. I don't ever smoke up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever smoke up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement Everything I do so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after I got facts over facts over tracks This and that spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, oh reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're with my time, you're delirious Mysterious, because you are behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains that last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah now that I've been put through I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself